بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم ارحم ضعفنا وقلة حيلتنا وتجاوز عنا وانصرنا من لدنك يا أرحم الراحمين وانصرنا من لدنك يا أرحم الراحمين ربي أدخلني مدخل صدق وأخرجني مخرج صدق واجعل لي من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا واجعل لنا من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم اغفر لأمة محمد اللهم ارحم أمة محمد اللهم تجاوز عن أمة محمد اللهم مهد أمة محمد The land of Palestine, especially Jerusalem where the holy Masjid Al-Aqsa is present It's a land which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran that Allah is the pure one Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa that Allah took his messenger took his servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a journey from from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa from the land where the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam which son Ismail alayhi salam had migrated with Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they built, they rebuilt Allah's holy home over there as we know it as Al Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shifted his selected nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had swept his selected ones from Bani Israel to Bani Ismail. Right before the appearance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was announced as the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was Bani Israel who were the selected ones. Allah said in the Holy Quran, أَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَتِي الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ O Bani Israel, recall the time when we had blessed you with a huge blessing and that blessing was that we appointed you, we selected you as the blessed ones, as the selected ones 
فضل تو کم عالمین یو ور دا بیٹر ونس یو ور رینکڈ ہائر دین اینی ادر کریچر یو ور رینکڈ ہائر دین آل آف دا ٹائمس آل آف دا نیشنس آل آف دا ورلڈس عالمین وین محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز اپوائنٹیڈ ایز دا فائنل میسنجر دین اٹ واز بنی اسرائیل وچ اللہ demoted from the from the position of the best ones of the selected ones and they became wabau because of him in allah they became the cursed ones because they did not comply to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders they, they did not comply to the commitment they had made to the messengers they did not comply to the responsibility they were given and as the final nail in the coffin of their own own misdeeds they tried to they tried to kill isa alayhi salatu wassalam na'udhu billahi min dhalik So they became وَبَعُوا بِغَوْدَ بِمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ And now the new ones, Bani Ismail, the son of Ishmael, Ismail alayhi salam, the children of Ishmael, Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam, became the selected ones and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appeared from within them. And now, When Bani Israel became وَبَعُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Bani Ismail, the ones who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and become his companions are now كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Now you are the selected ones. You are better than all the previous ones even better than anni fazal to kumala alamin better than bani israil and anyone who would become the companion of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam even he would be from bani israil even if he would be from the children of jacob from the children of israel would also become would also be among the khaira ummah كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ They would be the better ones than all the past ones. And now the final messenger is being taken on a journey from the land of Ishmael, Ismail alayhi salam, to the land of Israel. From Mecca to Jerusalem. It happened, it happened during the days of Mecca. before the time Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Madinatul Manawwara. And Allah is mentioning in Quran that we are taking the final messenger to the land where all of the messengers before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after Ibrahim alayhi salam appeared. And that is the holy land of Jerusalem, the holy land of Palestine, the holy land where Masjid al-Aqsa is located. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally did a miracle over there. And then Allah says in the Quran that لِنُورِيَهُ أَلَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ لِنُورِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا The land of Palestine, the land where Masjid Al-Aqsa is located, أَلَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ is the land where where Allah's blessings are falling forever. Barakna hawlahu. It is the blessed land. It is the blessed place where Allah's blessings keep on falling. Li nuriyahu min ayatina so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show the final messenger the land of the previous ones. the land of the previously best ones, previously selected ones, who were, which were demoted right by the appearance, appearance of the final messenger. 
and that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala li nuriyahu min ayatina that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the huge sign that all of the messengers and prophets came from the sky to offer salat prayer namaz after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where within masjid al-aqsa inside masjid al-aqsa signing the final stamp giving the final stamp on the finality of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and making him the leader making him the imam of all of the messengers before and there is no messenger after him so that land is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said li nuri barakna hawlahu that is the blessed land that's where hundreds maybe thousands of messengers and prophets came after Ibrahim alayhi salam and before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam it was so blessed so blessed that there would be one prophet in one area in one town and there would be another one in the adjacent one in the nearby one and it was so blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the capital of the whole world literally capital of the whole world literally it was where the king Solomon prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam led the kingdom of the whole world and he was a prophet within Bani Israel he was from the children of Abraham Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam and and he was the king of the whole world not only the whole world the humans of the whole world he was the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him kingdom over animals over all of the species so much so that even on ants and insects not only humans and animals and insects and pre, uh, and, and and birds also on jinns and shayateen all of them were told to all of them were told to obey the king Solomon he was Allah's appointee on earth and that was Jerusalem and the place where Masjid al-Aqsa is located was the place where that kingdom was being led from and he was given miracles like even today's technology cannot imagine he, he, he used to fly on his throne all around the world and it was a very comfortable ride the Quran says So that's the land where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first gave the responsibility of establishing Allah's deen around the globe. And Allah did that for them under the leadership of Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Allah says in Quran that Allah says in Quran inna arazna al-amanata ala samawati wal ardi wal jibali fa abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan innahu kana zaluman jahula so that important responsibility finally came to muslims to the followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but that responsibility that was assigned to Bani Israel because they did not fulfill their responsibility and they did mischief on earth many a times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath upon them is not yet complete it is yet to is it is yet to fall it has been falling in the past, but it has yet to fall in its com completion. 
and it's too unfortunate that those Bani Israel who verbally or with their actions to some extent and for some time accepted Islam and became the followers of Islam and became the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have also been falling short in establishing Allah's deen and removing forms of shirk from earth. I'm talking about the Muslims of Palestine. It's going to be a very, 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 very hard point I'm going to raise. And that is, why is it so that the people of Palestine are so, so oppressed? These are the people who are the descendants of, who are the descendants of Israel. Genetically, from the lineage point of view, they are the children of Israel who accepted Islam, most of them. Those are the Muslims who are living in Palestine. And the people, the Zionists, were the Jews, also from the children of Israel, from Bani Israel. They were scattered all over the world, and Allah says in the Quran that we will bring them before the final decision to, to their point of, point of a meeting. The people killing the Palestine, Palestinian Muslims are also, are also the children of Israel. And the people being killed are also children of Israel, majorly. The ones killing are the ones who insisted on being mischievous. They insisted on being the deniers of truth. They did mischief to the previous messengers as well. And when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appeared, they chose the mischief again. They chose the mischief again. And now they claim that we are the followers of previous messengers and they denied Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They they did not accept Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the final messenger. So these are the people who are basically mischievous people who kept on doing mischief over and over again. Previously they did to previous prophets and now they have been doing on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for past 1400 and more years. But the people who accepted Islam are also the, <coughs> excuse me, are also the descendants of Israel but they accepted Islam. They, they decided not to do mischief anymore. And now they, become, they became Kuntum Khaira Ummatin. They became one of the best ones. They became among the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But for the past 1500 years almost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many chances to this ummah that now you are kuntum khaira ummatin. You are the selected ones. You are better than the previous ummahs. It is upon you to establish Allah's deen on earth. But this ummah has been doing mischief since. They killed, they killed the family of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the apparent followers of this, this Islam who killed the family of their own messenger. Na'udhu Billahi Min Dhalik. It is the worst ever thing that happened on the face of earth since Adam Alayhi Salam until Qayyama probably. Certainly actually, not probably. And this ummah has been doing mischief again and again. I'm not talking about the people who kept on following the mischievous activities, the 
I'm not talking about the people who call themselves Jews and the people who call themselves Zionists. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people either from Bani Ismail or from Bani Israel or from other, other people around the world. These are the people, the Muslim ones, the ones who accepted Islam who were given the responsibility of establishing Allah's deen, the amana, that the skies and the earth could not, could not carry. They were given the responsibility and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them establish this deen for some time during the reign of the four caliphs. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped Bani Israel establish Allah's deen on earth during the time of King Solomon. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped this ummah establish Allah's deen under the reign of the four caliphs. But after that, this ummah has been falling short on establishing or, or staying pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to staying pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. They have been involved in corruption. They have been calling people to their own kingdoms, their own soul dictatorships. They have been indulging themselves in, in the lust of the world and the material. So, Allah's wrath had to come to its completion. And when would it come? It would come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes, shuts down this world. And we know from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the age of this ummah would be 1500 years, we are living in 1415 years. So this is the time Allah's wrath is on its peak. 1445. This is the time Allah's wrath is on its peak. So this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated to his sahaba that there would be a huge war when 99% of the people involved in that war on those areas would be killed. And that would be fought around, around the Middle East, the river Euphrates. And this Allah's wrath has started from where? Allah's wrath would fall definitely, definitely on the people who were given the responsibility of Kaaba, who, whose land was chosen for the appearance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would definitely fall on the corrupt people on the land of Hijaz, on the land of Arabia. But Allah's wrath has started to fall. It has started from a place, from a place which is the place of prophets and messengers, hundreds, maybe thousands of prophets and messengers came near and around Masjid al-Aqsa and Jerusalem. And it has started to fall upon the people who did not do well with their responsibility, who did not stay sincere to the responsibility they were given. So whatever is happening in Palestine and Israel and Gaza is Allah's wrath. It Allah's, it's Allah's wrath and Allah says, in the Holy Quran that Allah can make you taste each other's wrath by making you fight with each other. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing that the children of Israel, the ones who denied the final messenger are killing the ones who accepted the final messenger but did not, did not stand upon the responsibility. They did not help Allah's deen the way it was intended. They did, not, they did not do well with the responsibility the way they were meant to. And the final thing they recently did, they have recently done, 
is that since all of us know that Imam al-Mahdi, the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has appeared. And like in the past, when Bani Israel were expecting a king or a ruler or a rich man to lead them in a war, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a poor man, Talut alayhi salam, from a village. They were not ready to accept him, but they had to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated his Sunnah. And they were expecting the final messenger to appear from Bani Israel, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appear from Bani Ismail. Similarly, now the people of Arab are expecting Imam al Mahdi to appear from Hijaz. And the people of Israel are expecting their Messiah to come. All of that combined in one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeated his sunnah by, by making the Imam al-Mahdi appear from the east like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has had hinted, had hinted as well. Summa tatlu ra'ayatu sudi min qibal al-mashrik. Then it would be east from where Imam al-Mahdi would appear. So this has happened and the people of Arab did not accept him. The people of Palestine did not accept him. There's a quite viral sheikh on uh, social media named Sheikh Khalid al-Maghribi. He's quoted many times on social media. Yeah, he's he's uh, found on social media being, quoting different dreams about Imam al-Mahdi and different stuff about Imam al-Mahdi. Watch some of it. اخوانا عشان ما بيقيش وقت كتير بنتلو عليكم الرؤية اللي وعدناكم فيها في اول الدرس الرؤية تتكلم كالآتي When we reached out to him and told him about Imam al-Mahdi Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim he, he straight away rejected that he straight away denied to accept Muhammad Qasim's dreams and denied to accept Muhammad Qasim as Imam al-Mahdi and recently recently Sixth, on, on 5th or 6th September, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message for the ummah that why don't you understand that Allah's wrath is coming upon you? Watch. And a day after, the war started in Israel. So you can be sure that this is Allah's wrath and it has started from the people where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent so many messengers and they are still not understanding and they are upon their ways. They are not willing to give up on their ways. They are still insisting on stubbornness. They are not accepting the order of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when my son appears, it is upon you that you would have to give allegiance to my son Imam al-Mahdi. And would, even if you have to go skidding on the snow. They are not accepting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's order. They are not establ helping establish Allah's deen on earth. They just want physical support. Which is fine. But they must be there accepting Muhammad Qasim as Imam al-Mahdi. Otherwise Allah's wrath would keep on falling. It is very hard to say. But this is what it is. This is the truth. So this is the message for the Muslims all over the world. And this is the message for the Palestinians. Our thoughts are with you. Our prayers are with you. And the, and the, and the top and the first prayer for you is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you accept the hidayah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you accept the true Imam al-Mahdi. So even if you go, even if you are, you happen to be a victim of a blast or a missile or something, you would die a martyr. But if you go find yourself as a victim of a missile or, 
or, or, or the atrocities of Israel, and you are upon the position where you have not accepted Imam al-Mahdi, when he is there, out there, and his message is out there, then this is very hard to say, then this is most probably not the death of a martyr. Wallahu a'lamu bisawab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the state of Ummah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad.